Good evening, Colin McCarthy, and welcome to the Garage Theatre. Thank you very much, Eileen. Thank you for having me. Right. Tonight, now, you're going to do a monologue from what play and why? Um, it's from a play called King of the Castle by Eugene McCabe. Uh, the reason I picked it was because the author, Eugene McCabe, passed away earlier this year. Very well-known Monaghan playwright um, who hailed from Clonus. And um, this particular play was one of his most famous ones. It won awards when it was released uh, uh, originally. And it was a play that the, Drumlin play that the Drumlin Players did a number of years ago, back in 2007, I think it was. And it was directed by Larry McCluskey. And as you know too, Eileen, we lost Larry earlier this year too. So when you and I spoke about maybe doing a monologue um, during this session of online works, it was the first play that sprung to mind for, for those reasons, um, I suppose, in commemoration of those two very well-known individuals here in the Garage Theatre. Now, Colm, what was the very first play you did with us here in the Garage? The first play I did uh, in the Garage Theatre, in the old Garage Theatre, was Twelve Angry Men, uh, which anybody who knows the play knows it's a fantastic piece of drama. But it was directed at the time by Porrick McIntyre, who's a very well-known director uh, throughout Ireland. And uh, it was produced by yourself, Eileen, um, and it's still talked about nowadays around theatre circles here in North Monaghan as one of the best plays that I think was ever not only produced by the theatre here, but, but actually put on in County Monaghan. Um, and it was one that I had great fun in playing, Juror 10, in, which is, if anybody knows the play, it's a fantastic play. I played a bigoted man who was obviously just suppressing um, inner bias towards you know certain cohorts of people in society. And I really got to play around with it. It was very enjoyable. Right, right. And like during rehearsals there, I have to say, what really used to amuse me was your how you could go into the American accent and then just when you were delivering your lines and then when you weren't, straight back into the Carrick accent. Oh, well, you know, we're Carrick man through and through and the accent will come out whenever I'm talking normal. But if I have a line prepared and if I'm asked to do an accent, I, 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 I usually can do it. It's, it's a while since I've had to. But uh, when asked to do a generic American accent, I, I used to be well fit to do it anyway. So, but you'd never forget your your Carrick roots. <laughs> now, Colm, you haven't had as much time for the stage recently. You've been busy with a few other things going on in your life. Yeah, it's been probably six years since I've done a play. Um, I was hoping to do one earlier this year, but with COVID and everything else, it just didn't materialise. But yeah, six years ago, I was just thinking about it earlier, but three weeks before the local elections, uh, I was uh, on stage here playing uh, a part in John B. Keane's The Year of the Hiker, directed by Sonia Reynolds at the time. A, a great production as well, but three weeks later, uh, my brother happened to be elected to both the European Parliament and Monaghan County Council, and he could only do one, so I ended up being co-opted in his place onto Monaghan County Council. And unfortunately, with everything that has happened since I haven't had time to take on to do plays anymore, I've gotten married, we've had children, you know, time just becomes a, a, a commodity, and it's, it's hard to find the time to put the effort in that you need to in order to do amateur dramatics. Well, Colin, listen, I really appreciate that you've given up your free time to come in here this evening and do this monologue for us. So uh, thank you once again. Absolutely my pleasure. And thank you, Eileen, for the invite.